Thursday. Terremeister here. All right, this I told you I was going to talk about emotional eating, so here we go. Picture it. It's Friday night. All you can think of is how in the world did I get a hold of this awesomely bad 90s martial arts movie? You're bored out of your mind. The Candy Crush just isn't doing it for you anymore. So you say to yourself, you know what? I'm hungry. You go to the refrigerator. And you bend down. You look in that refrigerator. Hopefully you don't have plumber's crack going on. And you see something. The hallelujah chorus has just opened up in song. You see a cinnamon cake. Not just any cinnamon cake, but the one with the cinnamon sugar baked right into the top and in the sides of the cake. And you smile and grab it. You think of all the delectable things that you're going to do with that cake. Milk! Milk! <gasps> yeah! Milk will go good with this. You smile and you grab it. And you get a cup. Five months, five minutes later, you're sitting there with your big belly, pants button, unbuttoned, Sitting there like Buster Baxter for Martha when he's had too much to eat. And you feel like you got lead pellets just sitting in your stomach there. Now I'm sure I'm not the only... Now that... I'm sure I'm not the only one who's done that. I know everyone has been there. But now that we know that, how do we overcome this crazy urge to just stuff our face in response to emotional problems like boredom? And avoiding the sneak trip to Walmart to buy some of the same pants of a bigger size. So, I fished around for some advice about emotional eating, and I got some straightforward advice. Don't do it. Get up and exercise. Even try painting and coloring. Either way it went, it was all about getting up and do, doing something with your body so that you don't feel stuck in your mind. Elliot Hulse puts it simple, simply. You can't fight your mind on its home court. You fight it with your body. What I pulled from that was your mind is your emotions' home field advantage. You, how, Your body, however is your home field. So you have the advantage when you get up and do something other than eat emotionally. So how do, how do we take the first steps to overcome this? This is a constant struggle and food is a necessity of life, but overeating and emotional eating is not. Most often we're trying to hide or enhance an experience. Think about holidays and you've got a clear picture. So right there is the first step. What am I feeling? Because we are talking about enhancing or suppressing a feeling. Am I trying to enhance that or will eating this make me feel better? If I eat, then I'll have a rush, false bliss, and then wonder why I even ate it. When I was lonely, I went for something sweet and filling. So why, why do I go for those? The next step is how do I take what I'm feeling and alleviate it without adding inches to my bottom line? Well, simply, like I, like I can because I have a bike, I can go on a bike ride. Or do a turbo fire workout. It always feels like a party. Or maybe I beast up and put right in some Siggy time. Listen to music. Watch a movie that I've always enjoyed. You're probably aching for some me time at that very moment. Do you have a dog? Grab the dog and give him some love. Take him out for a run, or maybe if you have a skateboard, ride, ride on the skateboard while he pulls you along for the ride. You can always, you can say this to yourself when it's about getting out of your head. These feelings are here, and I can confront them with something positive. And most of all, you feel happier than when you started, which was the goal in the first place. By drinking too much, eating too much has a hangover. We can stop that before it becomes a problem. Also, you will build up little victories. You'll build a track record of success, which is little things done well repeatedly. Next Terrific Tuesday's vid will be all about abs, not just the front, but the back too. Tearmeister out. See you later.